Defense analysts keep insisting that true 7th generation fighter jets won't show up until the 2070s. But when you look at what's already happening in the shadows, that timeline starts to fall apart fast. Boeing has been quietly flying experimental aircraft for about five years. Hypersonic programs are moving from lab tests to real-world trial. And the arms race with China is forcing the Pentagon to pull future tech forward whether the experts like it or not. The part nobody wants to say out loud is simple. The building blocks for 7th generation fighters already exist today. We're talking about aircraft that could cruise at Mach 5, dip in and out of the edge of space, fire laser weapons, and use artificial intelligence to make split-second combat decisions no human could process in time. The real question isn't if those machines will define the next era of air dominance. It's how soon the U.S. Air Force decides to roll them out in the open. Welcome to Nuke Aviator. In this breakdown, we're going to dig into why America is likely decades closer to 7th generation fighters than anyone is publicly admitting, and how the technology being tested right now will turn today's most advanced jets into museum pieces. If you believe American innovation doesn't slow down for anybody, type proud in the comments and let's get into it. Defense experts love to project calm, linear timelines. They'll tell you 7th gen is way off, something for the later part of this century. But the data points we can see tell a different story. Historically, Berg, every new fighter generation took longer to appear than the last because complexity kept increasing. What's happening now is the exact opposite. Multiple breakthrough technologies are maturing at the same time. And when that happens, timelines collapse. Look at what President Trump revealed in March 2025. He confirmed that experimental sixth generation aircraft had already been flying in secret for nearly five years. That means while the public was still arguing about fifth gen versus fourth gen, the Air Force was already proving the next step in real flight tests, not PowerPoint slides. If sixth gen prototypes were airborne in 2020, you have to ask the obvious question. What early 7th gen concepts are already in motion that we simply haven't heard about yet? The old development model assumes you finish one generation and only then begin serious work on the next. That's not how things work anymore. Artificial intelligence, hypersonic propulsion, advanced composite and ceramic materials, and directed energy weapons are all accelerating at the same time. When those streams converge, you don't get a gradual step you get a jump. You can see it in the industrial base, too. Major primes are pouring billions into facilities that clearly go beyond today's known program. Boeing's roughly $1.8 billion expansion isn't just about building F-47 airframe. You don't design new factories with capabilities you might need one day. You do it when you already know what kind of aircraft you'll be cranking out next, and roughly when you'll need to do it. The clearest sign that timelines are compressing is what's happening behind closed doors. When Trump announced Boeing's selection for the 6th Gen fighter, he casually dropped the bombshell that experimental versions had already been flying for almost five years. That wasn't just about validating stealth shapes or cockpit layouts. It was about proving core concepts that can scale directly into a seventh-generation architecture. DARPA is another breadcrumb trail the public can actually see. Programs focused on launch and recovery concepts that don't rely on traditional long runways are already funded and in development. Vertical or near-vertical launch capabilities, recoverable drones, and aircraft that operate far away from fixed bases all start to look a lot like 7th generation requirements, not 6th. These are not someday PowerPoint projects. They have real contracts, real teams, and real deadlines. At the same time, the Air Force Research Laboratory is working on compact power systems and thermal management for airborne-directed energy weapons. In plain English, they're solving the hardest part of putting operational lasers on aircraft. That's not academic theory. Those are engineering problems being closed out by American scientists and engineers right now. Even the baseline advanced engines being built for sixth-generation fighters are overperforming. Adaptive cycle engines designed for NGAD are already hitting targets that look suspiciously like seventh-gen performance. When your current program is out outperforming its own requirement sheet, it usually means the engineers are already designing with the next generation in mind. Hypersonic capability is really the heart of the seventh generation concept. Sustained speeds beyond Mach 5 turn a region-wide problem into a minute's long response window. Programs like scramjet-powered demonstrators have moved from lab toys to real flight tests far faster than older generations of tech ever did. The physics barriers, propulsion, heat, materials, are being knocked down one by one. New high-temperature composites and ceramics capable of surviving the brutal heating of hypersonic flight are coming out of test furnaces across multiple contractors. These are not incremental, better paint upgrades. They're materials that make it possible for manned or optionally manned aircraft to operate in flight regimes that used to belong only to ballistic missiles. Combine that kind of speed with mature stealth and you get something that simply doesn't fit inside current air defense doctrine. A hypersonic, low-observable aircraft guided by AI doesn't 
doesn't try to sneak around a defense network. It slices straight through it before the defenders can even finish processing what they're seeing. Private companies racing to lower the cost of space access are accidentally solving problems the military needs too. Propulsion efficiency, materials that can tolerate brutal re-entry, and precise guidance at extreme speed. All of that knowledge bleeds directly into hypersonic fighter and strike concept, whether anyone says it out loud or not. Artificial intelligence is the other engine driving 7th gen closer. Today's AI already beats human pilots in simulated dogfights. It reacts faster, tracks more variables, and doesn't get tired or overloaded. When you plug that level of decision-making into a fighter's brain, you're no longer just helping the pilot. You're fundamentally changing what pilot even means. Generative AI and advanced onboard processors will be able to fuse sensor data, identify threats, calculate firing solutions, and suggest or execute tactics in fractions of a second. The cockpit becomes more like a command chair on a starship than a traditional fighter. The human still makes the big calls, but the machine is doing 90% of the thinking in the background. AI is also crushing old development timelines through digital engineering. Digital twins, fully detailed virtual aircraft, let engineers run thousands of design iterations in simulation before a single part gets machined. What used to take years of wind tunnel testing and prototype rework can now be boiled down into months of high-fidelity modeling and targeted physical verification. Autonomous flight control is maturing just as fast. We're already seeing unmanned systems execute complex missions that would have been reserved for manned aircraft just a few years ago. Seventh generation designs could easily be built as optionally manned platforms from day one, flying unmanned in the most dangerous roles or with a human on board when the mission demands it. And then there's the pressure from China. Nothing focuses American defense innovation like a serious peer competitor openly chasing the same goals. When Chinese sixth gen prototypes suddenly show up in test flights and splash across social media, planners in Washington don't shrug, they hit the accelerator. Those twin Chinese prototypes spotted in early 2025 sent a very clear message. Beijing is not waiting politely for the West to finish NGAD. That kind of surprise is exactly what forces program offices and political leaders to accept more risk, compress milestones, and fund parallel efforts that normally would have been delayed. Russia, with projects like its next-generation interceptor concepts, adds another front of competition. Even if Moscow lags economically, their design bureaus keep pushing boundaries in high-altitude, long-range interceptor technology. When both major competitors are probing upward, you don't get the luxury of slow, conservative planning. The other big driver is space. Space is no longer a peaceful high ground. It's a contested domain, and every major power knows it. Satellites that provide navigation, communication, missile warning, and targeting are all at risk from anti-satellite weapons. Defending and replacing those assets will eventually require systems that can operate in and near space, not just passively, but actively. Seventh-generation aircraft concepts that can briefly leave the atmosphere, conduct a mission, and drop back into airspace start to make a lot more sense in that context. Whether it's rapid response recon, satellite support, or anti-satellite missions, the ability to cross that airspace boundary gives you options no current fighter can offer. Meanwhile, directed energy weapons, military lasers, and other high-energy systems are quietly crossing the line from demo to deployable. The Air Force Research Laboratory has been attacking the twin problems of power generation and heat dissipation for years. We're now at the point where high-energy lasers on aircraft are not a fantasy. They're engineering programs with real timeline. Lasers change everything. Speed of light engagement, no ballistic drop, no intercept curve, no magazine limit in the traditional sense. Just power available in line of sight. Mount that on a hypersonic, stealthy platform, guided by AI, and you've got a 7th generation weapon system that can defend itself, shred incoming missiles, and engage multiple targets in a single pass. Behind all of this is a manufacturing revolution. Additive manufacturing, 3D printing, and emerging 4D techniques let you build parts that were impossible with traditional machining. Internal lattice structures, optimized for strength and weight, integrated cooling channels, and rapid redesign are now normal, not exotic. Boeing and other primes aren't just adding factory space. They're installing digital production lines, AI-assisted quality control, and flexible tooling that can switch from one airframe type to another with minimal downtime. You don't build that kind of capacity if you plan to trickle out a few dozen jets and call it a day. You build it for sustained, high-tempo production of platforms that haven't been publicly acknowledged yet. Put all of this together and the picture is hard to ignore. Classified demonstrators converging breakthrough tech, hypersonic progress, AI acceleration, space and directed energy requirements, plus massive industrial investment. It all points in the same direction. Seventh-generation fighters are not some distant 70-year dream. They're likely on a trajectory measured in the 2040s, or even the late 2030s, 
depending on threat pressure and political will. Public talking points will stay conservative because that's how classified programs survive. But the U.S. Air Force has never waited for the rest of the world to catch up before moving forward. When American pilots' lives and national survival are on the line, the United States doesn't accept parity. It builds overwhelming superiority. Seventh-generation fighters are the next expression of that mindset. Platforms that fly higher, faster, and smarter than anything we've ever put into the sky. Aircraft that blend air, space, cyber, and directed energy into a single system, built to keep American air power untouchable for another generation. When these jets finally roll out of the black world and into the spotlight, the rest of the world will act shocked. But the truth is simple. The future of air warfare is already being shaped today in secure hangars and digital labs across America. The only real question is when Nuke Aviator will be talking about them as current aircraft instead of next generation. If this deep dive gave you a clearer picture of how far ahead American aerospace really is, hit like, subscribe to Nuke Aviator, and tell us in the comments which 7th generation capability excites you the most. Hypersonics, lasers, AI, or space operation. Your support helps us keep breaking down the technology that keeps our country safe.